So this next case study, I wouldn't necessarily call a toxic workplace, but it is very interesting. My husband's job said that raises aren't negotiable. Does that sound right? Really interesting question, and this talks to the point about the power differential between employers and employees. Um, and making blanket statements like that is, you know, it's, it's a really interesting case study, so let's go through it. So the company had been making record profits. There's been lots of moving parts, and this person's husband had been integral to that, that machine, that business. He negotiated, I'm assuming with his manager, for a slightly better raise, thinking think something like an extra $2,000 a year. So that's not life and death, that's not a huge difference. The company, they denied this extra raise, saying that the 3% raise they offered was all they could do. They budgeted for raises for 2024, and there is no wiggle room. Does that sound right? Now, there is some truth in this, but that does not mean that there is no wiggle room. So in large corporations, typically in, in bigger, this, this first section goes for bigger businesses, um, typically publicly listed companies. They have very rigid processes to deal with merit reviews, um, performance appraisals, and the associated pay rises that come along with that. And yes, the budget is set before they've even looked at anyone's performance, right? But that is the overall budget for the entire business, and then it gets chunked up into business units and down into departments and so on and so forth until everyone gets a kind of a budget to work with, and every manager gets a budget to work with to distribute across their team. So that is a total budget for the team. So in some circumstances, what I've done in the past is give some people slightly less and some people slightly more to fit within my budget. But in other circumstances, what I've done in the past is go back up the chain to say, I've got an exceptionally high performing person in my team that I do not want to lose. I need an extra X thousand dollars to give them what I think that they deserve and it's gonna keep them on board. And here are the reasons. And I, I have to put together my... I have to put together the business case as to why this money is worth spending and where I'm going to get that from and, and what I'm willing to give up or other parts of budget. It all comes down into a budgeting framework, right? That's ultimately how large businesses work. You have to stick within your budgets because budgets is what they use for forecasting and forecasting is extremely important for business operations and for things like reporting information to the market and about the performance of the business because things can affect the share price materially right so the takeaway point from this particular case study is that if someone tells you something isn't negotiable they are lying everything is negotiable now you have to potentially be a very good negotiator in some circumstances and that does not mean that you're going to negotiate that pay rise at that specific time anything that comes down to budgeting um, which includes forecasting as well you need to allow sufficient amount of time in advance so that it can be planned for so in this case, if he negotiated that slightly better raise, say an extra two grand a year on top of that 3% that he was already gonna get, if that negotiation had taken place six months even before the appraisal happened, that's when you're in with a shot for it to go through much more smoothly, uncontested. You negotiate well in advance so that it can be planned for, budgeted for, and you put your case early so that when it comes time to allocating budgets for these sorts of things, they go, ah, yes, I remember I made that agreement. I'm gonna need a little bit more money. I'll make sure that I plan for that and I go forward. Just because you perform amazingly doesn't mean that you are going to get the extra raise that you deserve because you have not planned for it, right? It's really important as an employee that if you are genuinely a you know, if you are a single point of failure, you are critical to the operations of that business and you always deliver and you go above and beyond and you perform beyond everyone else, you need to start having the conversations about where your remuneration fits early. Get in 12 months early, get in six months early. Ideally, in this circumstance, what I would recommend, if that was me, I kind of have to grin and bear it that, you know, that's all there is for 2024 and that's right. But now is your chance to start negotiating for 2025. 12 months out, use the lines, use something along the lines of, okay, I understand this wasn't budgeted for and it doesn't fit. I'd like to make sure that this doesn't happen again next year. So here's what I'm proposing. What would it take for me to get a 5% pay rise at next, um, at next performance review? And they'll talk about what it could take and so on and so forth. They'll give you some conditions. 
So then you validate, you go back and say, okay, so if I achieve X, Y, Z, A, B, C, whatever the conditions are, you will give me, you will agree to give me, and you are authorized to give me a 5% pay rise at the next performance review. Now, this is where a lot of managers will pull back and go, well, I don't know if I have the authority to do that. I don't know, like they, they can be a bit um, concerned. So that's when you need to get it in writing and you need to get agreement from them that this is what is going to happen. It is so much harder for people to back out of something they've agreed to they, that they have agreed to in writing, but also that they have reiterated that they agreed to. So if they come back and say, um, yes, if you achieve X, Y, Z, A, B, and C to this standard, this standard, this standard, this standard, I will approve a 5% pay rise for you. When people make that kind of commitment to you, it's really difficult for them to go back on their word. People will still do it, but it's so much harder because they don't have an excuse. You gotta try and get the assumptions and the potential excuses out of there, right? The, the core here is that you want that to be clear. Um, you want it to be unambiguous. You want to make sure it's really obvious. There's no way that anyone could interpret it in another way. You want them to see that I achieved X to Y standard. I achieved A to B standard. And it's Blind Freddy could see that that's exactly what has happened. And here's the agreement. It kind of forms a verbal contract, even though it might not be fully enforceable. Um, it's ethically and morally enforceable, and you can take them to task over that. And if you do this and they renege on that deal, you know that it's not a place for you because people don't stick to what they say they're gonna do, and it's time to find yourself another job. So if you've experienced some interesting things in the workplace like this, um, you know, this one's not so toxic, uh, but I've heard, seen a lot of toxic workplace environment stories that I'm gonna keep going through. Um, so if there's any workplace stories you wanna share with me, for me to go through your story and talk to them and, and talk about some strategies of dealing with that situation, please drop me a DM, um, leave me a comment on my video and get in touch and I'll do one of these videos about your experience.